Hi, welcome to Best MMA Picks. I'm your host, JD, and we are kicking off this uh, breakdown and discussion of UFC Fight Night 87, Overeem versus Arlovsky. Um, I'll be breaking down uh, the six main card fights for you. I will not be breaking down any prelims, but I will give uh, my gut plays of what I feel who's going to win um, on the undercards. Um, keep in mind that they are gut plays, so what that means is that there's little to no handicapping involved with them. Um, by the end of the week, I will have watched footage on all those, and I will probably have a few plays, what I deem to be solid plays. Uh, we're coming off of a couple rough cards, um, not not the start that I've wanted to have for 2016, uh, but I am positive that over the long run we will rebound and um, our record will improve. So, you know, don't give up on us. Keep, you know, tuning in uh, to our uh, podcasts and uh, make sure you keep an eye on our plays. Everything's verified at uh, Capper Tech. You can see our link below to our Capper Tech page. Um, so everything's tracked by a third party. We have nothing to hide. We don't bullshit around. We're not trying to tout. So, you know, it's, you know, it is what it is. Some people have cold streaks. It just so happens we're on one. Um, we will turn that around. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention was we have a pretty, uh, good sized Facebook group starting off, uh, for discussion, uh, Oz discussion. We've got several talented handicappers that come in on a regular basis and they, uh, give their opinions on fights and their plays. Um, you can check us out. The link below, I, I posted a link in the description of this video. Uh, make sure you join us. Um, it's a public group. However, you will need an invite and an acceptance from one of the group members. Uh, but there's, we have about 150 people right now that are very active and MMA better. So come join the community. Uh, it's kind of a newer group, but it's definitely got some traction to it. Um, other than that, let's go ahead and get started. I want to get these things uh, out of the way, and uh, let's get let's get this show on the road and uh, get our predictions down. Try to keep this video under 20 minutes if I can. So just bear with me here just one second. And here we go. Jeez. All right. So here we are, UFC Fight Night, Rotterdam, Netherlands, taking place this Sunday morning. It's a morning card at 11 a.m., so keep that in mind uh, when you are uh, – <laughs> don't don't think on it being in the evening. <laughs> um, I've made this mistake before where I didn't look at the times, and, yeah. I ended up being a day early on a card, on a Sunday card. I thought it was on Saturday night. So, um, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, but starting this one off, we'll go from the bottom up. Um, starting off the card, uh, we have Carolina Kowakowicz, and I'm pretty sure I just butchered that name, but whatever. Um, she is a Polish kickboxer, a uh, very technical striker, has very good hand speed, good footwork, uh, comes from a really good training camp, um, you know, Eastern European, very technical, uh, striking. Um, she also has some abilities on the ground to, um, you know, with reversals and submissions. She has abilities, the ability to submit her opponents. Uh, she is a mainly a decision fighter, though. She's a technical uh, striker, so she likes to kind of uh, make, uh, you know, women chase her and uh, make mistakes on the feet and she tends to pick people apart over the long run you know over the over the course of the fight um heather joe clark is kind of the opposite she's kind of uh what i like to call a dirty fighter dirty she's got good dirty boxing she likes to make things ugly and then things don't always look pretty she does get hit um she tends to uh she's definitely a live underdog in this fight i believe i don't think people are giving her enough respect um, she did defeat Beck Rawlings in a fight um, that I thought she was looked very. Um, she, she looked fairly impressive to me. I, I was very surprised with her abilities. Um, she kind of, she's been training with Extreme Couture in uh, Las Vegas, so she has had a very good training camp. Um, so I expect her to have several improvements uh, with her uh, fighting game. Uh, you know, particularly her ground game. She's a uh, Purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. 
Um, so she does pose a threat on the ground. Um, I don't think that uh, Kowalkowicz is going to have a problem with that. She knows what to do and how to keep herself out of trouble. But when push comes to shove, if the fight does have to go to the ground, Heather Jo Clark does have some skills with her Brazilian jiu-jitsu that she can rely on. She also has some wrestling skills as well. Um, she submitted 43% of her opponents. Uh, and, and so she, she definitely has, you know, she's, she's a well-rounded mixed martial artist in my opinion. You can't let her, her record, uh, you know, don't let her record deceive you as far as making a betting decision. Um, I think, you know, the records here are polar opposites, but I think Heather Joe Clark has that kind of X factor and that heart that can sometimes translate into a win or, you know, a split decision, uh, victory, um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. I urge people to be careful betting and throwing a bunch of money on the favorite here, Kowalkowicz. So, you know, just be careful there. Uh, you know, do your, your research on both fighters, but uh, I believe that Heather Joe Clark's definitely in a, a live dog here. Um, I don't know if that I will play that, you know, as a, as a dog play, but keep in mind that I think that she will make the fight. She could at some point make the fight ugly and she is capable of hitting Kowakowicz. She's not immune to being hit. Um, she does absorb, you know, a couple strikes per minute. Heather Joe Clark definitely is the type, though, to uh, bite down on her mouthpiece and just throw and and uh, put herself in the pocket. So, you know, she does take a lot of damage, but she also can dish out a lot of damage. So my prediction here is for Carolina Kowakowicz to defeat Heather Joe Clark by decision. Next fight we have... The Ukrainian kickboxer Nikita Krylov versus the Brazilian jiu-jitsu uh, black belt Francimar Barroso, uh, who also uh, holds a black belt in some form of kickboxing. Um, you know, that's coming off of the UFC website. They didn't specify that. But keep that in mind, this guy does have a black belt in striking as well. So um, a lot of people might not know that, that he is capable of knocking guys out. He's actually knocked out a higher percentage of his fights then Krylov. Um, Krylov is coming down from heavyweight, though. He he dropped weight from heavyweight to lightweight, um, and he does throw at a very high rate, um, and he tends to come out in the first round very aggressively. And this may play, uh, you know, this may play a problem for him if he comes out too aggressive and leaves openings. Um, I, I think he's pretty technical, but he's also... Uh, he does take risks to get finishes. He's got very good submissions. Um, he, he It's not all about being on the feet. When the fight goes to the ground, he can submit guys. Uh, I don't think he's going to be intimidated at all by a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. But I think that this fight's going to probably stay on the feet the majority of the time. And I, I think Krylov does have the weapons to beat uh, Barroso just about everywhere. I think Barroso is more of a defensive striker and it's going to not be good for him to be that way, to be tentative against a guy like Krylov, um, unless he can counter strike and catch him flush. Um, I, I, I see this one going more the way of Krylov, especially being in his home territory, you know, in that general area, Netherlands and Europe, um, his fan base, he'll have more of a fan base present. Um, so my, my prediction here is for, Nikita Krylov to defeat Francimar Barroso by TKO. Next fight, we have uh, the Dutch uh, Muay Thai striker Jermaine Durandami versus Anna Panda Almos. Um, there's a huge disparity in experience between the two of these women. Um, we have one who is just a, uh, an elite striker and uh, well-rounded mixed martial artist. And we have a newcomer who is a knockout artist who's finished her last three opponents um, in smaller leagues, local to Denmark. Um, the home turf goes to the Iron Lady. Um, she doesn't have the prettiest of records, but she has had some uh, losses that were kind of, you know, it could have gone either way for her. Um, I believe that the difference here is going to be the experience with this fight. I I've seen footage on both of these women almost definitely has the ability to knock women out, but she's definitely the smaller and the shorter fighter here. Um, and I, and that's definitely a disadvantage against a more experienced fighter. 
I think that Jermaine Randami has a good takedown defense. She's going to keep the fight on the feet. Almost when she finds out that she's technically inferior, she's going to probably shoot for takedowns, try to get the fight to the ground. That's not going to work in her favor because um, she's going to get timed and probably clipped with an uppercut or a very brutal knee. And I don't see this one ending well. I could definitely see this one having a finish to it. Um, my prediction here is for the Iron Lady to defeat Anna Elmos by TKO in the second round. Moving on to the next fight, Albert Einstein Tumanov versus Gunnar Nelson from Iceland. Uh, both these fighters have similar records. Um, Gunnar Nelson's coming off of a humiliating loss to uh, Damian Maya, where he was dominated completely on the ground. Um, Albert Tumanov has a heap of momentum behind him uh, with several TKOs and KOs of uh, UFC uh, fighters. Um, he throws at a much higher rate, almost double the rate of Gunnar Nelson. Um, he has excellent takedown defense at 83.33%. Uh, Gunnar Nelson has decent takedown accuracy though at 58.33% and he is a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt um, and a, I believe it's a Henzo Gracie black belt at that. Um, so he's definitely got a, a reputable black belt and at one point they said that he could be a champion um, in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, so, you know, we've got high credentials there on the ground versus uh, you know, high credentials on the feet. And it's interesting fight, interesting matchup here to me. Um, Gunnar Nelson, I believe, also holds a black belt in karate. Um, I, I don't want to say it's taekwondo. I believe it's uh, karate. I, I don't remember which type. Um, but he does have striking uh, abilities. They're not they're more technical and more evasive in a defensive counter-striking in nature. Um, and he uses it more as a way to keep people at distance. Um, and he likes to throw a lot of uh, kicks as well. Um, I don't know that he's going to get a whole lot of opportunities on the feet here, and I think he's going to want to take this one to the ground as soon as possible. I don't know if he's going to be able to do that. That's the big question here. But I think that Gunnar Nelson is a very sly, and um, he's a sly and a crafty opponent. And I believe that he will find a way to get this one to the ground and possibly get a submission or ground and pound TKO. Um, I think he's a smart fighter. Both these guys are smart fighters, but I think Tumanov is more prone to being frustrated when he does not connect with his, uh, his strikes. And um, I think Nelson is just evasive enough and has a karate background to be evasive on the feet and to time and get a takedown. So, um, you know, this, People might call me crazy, but, you know, most of my picks for this card are pretty square picks. This is the only one where I think that there is, you know, I think we have a live underdog here with Gunnar Nelson. I don't like betting against a guy like Tumanov who's on a huge momentum, you know, who's on a streak riding him away of a momentum. However, I believe that the buck could stop here for him with the, um, you know, the abilities of Gunnar Nelson. I believe Gunnar Nelson has that. Uh, you know, after that humiliating loss, one of two things going to happen. He's going to come back stronger, you know, or he's going to, it's going to affect him in a way where he declines similar in the way that Anthony Pettis did. So, you know, it could go one of two ways. It's hard to say, um, you know, he's got, has a positive camp. So my prediction here is for Gunnar Nelson to defeat Albert Tumanov by uh, submission. Moving on to the next fight. We have Antonio Bigfoot Silva versus Stefan Skyscraper Struve. Both of these guys have had uh, coming, they're coming off of, uh, you know, not the best performances. Um, you know, Bigfoot coming off of a TKO, Stefan Struve coming off of a victory, but one that was just not impressive whatsoever, not the normal Stefan Struve that we've seen. Um, you know, a lot of questions behind these two guys as to whether or not they were using PEDs. I don't, not going to really, you know, entertain too much of that. Um, we've seen a lot of weird stuff happening with fighters, you know, that um, had some impressive victories, and then all of a sudden they just kind of went flat. This is a case of two fighters where that happened. Um, this one's a hard one for me, you know, to, to predict. It's a two-to-one favorite, you know, uh, scenario here with Stefan Struve being two-to-one. 
favored against Antonio Silva. And I think it's mainly because of his speed and height advantage with the reach advantage. Um, you can't count Bigfoot out though. He's got big power. You know, it's kind of like one of those things, whoever connects first is going to get, you know, the victory in my opinion. Um, Bigfoot does have some grappling credentials. However, he doesn't ever use them really. Um, it's more on the feet, you know, with the hands for him. Stefan Strews more uh, prone to pulling guard and trying to get guys on the ground, using those long legs to lock up a triangle, you know, or other submissions. Um, but <clears throat> for me, I think that this one's kind of a coin toss. With heavyweights, when you have such a large favorite, it makes more sense to take an underdog in my opinion, because it's any man's game, whoever connects, um, you know, and Stefan Struve to me was not that impressive on his last fight. You know, Antonio Silva's chin is pretty much gone in my opinion. So if he, you know, if Struve connects uh, with that chin, he's going to sleep, but you know, it's not necessarily going to be uh, an easy victory for Struve either. I think that Silva could connect as well and could end the night quickly um, being that this fight is in the Netherlands, I'm more uh, out to take Stefan Struve here. Um, be very wary, though, about betting Stefan Struve at those odds. Uh, but my prediction here is for Stefan Struve to defeat uh, Bigfoot Silva by TKO. And the last fight of the night, the two teammates from Jackson and Winkle John, um, Jackson submission fighting in New Mexico. We have Alistair the Reem Overeem and Andre Pitbull Orlovsky. Um, both these guys uh, have had somewhat of a streak going in their favor. Um, Orlovsky's coming off of a loss. Overeem, I believe, was coming off of a win. The TKO of Junior Dos Santos. Um, this one here is another heavyweight fight where you have a two to one favorite against a two to one underdog. Um, I think Alistair Overeem has kind of found his groove. If, if I'm to be honest, um, I do not like the guy's chin. I think he has the biggest glass jaw that you would not believe. And I think anytime that somebody connects with him there, he, there's a good chance that he's going to get TKO'd. Um, if Arlovsky connects with those powerful, you know, his uppercut um, or gets him against the cage and lands an elbow and stuns him, the night could end early for uh, Overeem and it could be a humbling defeat. Uh, I don't see it going that way. Um, I actually see this one possibly even going the distance because of the fact that both these guys um, have trained together. Um, they both kind of know each other. And what we've seen before with um, teammates fighting Arlovsky and Brown before, where Arlovsky got the best of Travis Brown. Um, Arlovsky is definitely a guy who I think he has a little bit higher fight IQ than Overeem. I think Overeem has done a good job implementing a plan that was put in place by his coaches, not to take anything away from the intelligence of Overeem, but he wasn't fighting the smartest before. And uh, he... He's a very offensive fighter, but he was leaving himself open to a lot of stuff. They've changed his tactics and made him more of a defensive counter striker. And that has really helped him as far as his, uh, his game. Arlovsky, on the other hand, is a very intelligent fighter. He has good movement on the feet. He's definitely, uh, he's got good hand speed. Uh, he has chin problems as well, though, as we've seen, but coming off of all those victories, he had about one loss, one TKO, um, I still think that Arlovsky here is a live dog. It's hard for me to take him. I feel that the uh, game plan here is going to be the same that Overeem has had. And um, this one could go the distance. It'd be kind of boring, actually. Um, but I, I predict here that um, Overeem is going to get the better of the, uh, you know, of the striking with the powerful knees. He's got more weapons in his arsenal, I believe, with his Dutch Muay Thai, you know, and just a lot of, uh, you know, those heavy knees, if he gets him against the cage, um, and some heavy hands as well. Uh, you know, he's got a good head kick. He's got too many weapons at his disposal. Both these guys have weapons, but I think Overeem, as long as he protects his chin and he keeps playing that defensive game, I think the power, he's got both power and speed. Uh, and I think he can put Arlovsky away. Um, but my prediction here is for Alistair Overeem to defeat Andre the Pitbull Orlovsky 
<laughs> by decision. I think it's going to probably go past one and a half rounds. So keep that in mind. But you know, it 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 could it could end early too. I think both these guys have a lot of respect for each other, and it's not gonna it's not gonna be you know it's not gonna be a ten second fight. I think that they're gonna really feel each other out the first round. So. Um, that about does it here for our predictions for the main card. I'm going to quickly go through from the undercard up with my gut picks here. First uh, fight, Oka Sasaki versus Willie Gates. Going with Willie Gates to defeat by decision, to defeat Sasaki by decision. Leon Edwards and Dominic Waters. Um, boy, my gut here. Um, I like the odds with Waters, but um, I got to go with Leon Edwards to defeat Dominic Waters by decision next fight we got kyoji horiguchi versus neil siri i've got kyoji horiguchi defeating neil siri by decision um next fight we have jan cabral versus riza madadi um, i have the mad dog riza madadi defeating jan cabral by decision next we have john tuck versus josh emmett um, i have john tuck defeating josh emmett by tko next fight we have magnus sedenblad versus Gareth McClellan. This one's a tough one for me. I have Magnus Sidenblad defeating Gareth McClellan by decision. We have Rustam Kabilov versus Chris Wade. I have the underdog Chris Wade defeating Rustam Kabilov by... I'm going to go with submission. Rear naked choke. So that about does it. Um, hopefully this was helpful to you. Please make sure you subscribe below. Hit subscribe. Give us a thumbs up if we helped you with some of our information. We appreciate that. Every thumbs up helps our channel. And uh, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you uh, join our, our, bets, our uh, discussion group on Facebook. And uh, make sure you add our Twitter. That's where we post all of our links to our videos and our plays. Um, all of our plays will be posted to Capper Tech. There will be a link pinned to our Twitter. Um, probably close to um, a couple hours before the fight card starts or you know, an hour before the fight card. So keep an eye on that. Um, other than that, I hope everybody has a great week um, and stay tuned. We'll be back with more picks. We should have uh, get our friend uh, guest MMA Savant helping break down possibly the Thomas Almeida versus Cody Bar Garbrandt card in Las Vegas. So stay tuned for that one. We'll have links posted there as well. So thank you for tuning in and everybody have a great night.